Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Nihongo Master Podcast. I'm your host Azra, and what better way to start any day than with a bit of music, am I right? Music is a huge part of any and every culture, and Japanese popular culture has greatly influenced the type of popular Japanese music we hear on the streets of Japan. We mentioned time and time again in our past few episodes in this season of J-pop, which is an abbreviated term for Japanese pop or Japanese pop music. Basically, this music genre has been a part of Japanese popular culture since the 20th century. Just like Western pop, J-pop is accessible, upbeat, and very much radio-friendly. While we have a whole episode on the types of music in Japan, Season 2 Episode 3, Tunes and Beats, this episode is much different. We zoom into J-pop, its history and characteristics, and how the modern popular culture has created this ideal culture in this music industry. Now, without further ado, let's get jamming! A professor named Nisim Otomazkin, who wrote a book about Japanese popular culture, said, J-pop represents another production format constructed in Japan through the process of borrowing, mimicking, and hybridizing American pop and rock music. Now we'll start off with a bit of history to J-pop music, and it takes us back to the early years of the Showa era, which is about the 1920s to 1980s. This began with the Ryukoka, a form of popular music that was influenced by Western jazz and blues. It was then replaced with Enka, a type of emotional balladry, and a more polished version, Kayo Kyoku, and we talked about both in Season 2, Episode 3. Then other influences from the West filtered in, like rock and roll and blues, which brought the rise of electric guitar-driven music and bands, kind of like the Japanese version of the Beatles. Then folk, hard rock, and punk influences were brought in. The guitars changed to synthesizers, and electropop and fusions were all the rage. The J-pop music was like twin poles with Enka and Kayo Kyoku until the 1980s and 1990s, which was when we saw the beginnings of the idol culture. We'll get into that in a little bit. Anyway, this is also about the time when the electro-poppy fusions became the music industry standard of the modern definition of J-pop. Or when things started blowing up, starting with the capital city of Tokyo. It was also when girl groups and boy groups started growing exponentially. Now, while the J-pop ongaku music hasn't changed much since, the genre has embraced techno, folk and hip-hop elements. But as you can tell, J-pop is a combination of a variety of international influences that the Japanese have made their own. And that's admirable. Because that's what makes J-pop so unique. They don't follow the rules of Western music, they make their own rules. No compilation of a studio album, instead a series of singles. So instead of featuring a single song from the album, the singles are featured in a compilation album, most of the time with alternate album mixes to boost sales for the record and single. There's also a specific sound to the genre, and it's so popular that artists of the genre don't need to conform or adopt to Western music styles. And if I'm being technical here, J-pop usually features chord changes and vocal delivery that resembles much more towards traditional Japanese music than any other Western pop. With simple melodies and higher pitched vocals, I'd say it can be closely compared to the 1970s bubblegum rock. And that's your brief rundown of what J-pop music is, and how the version of it in today's Japanese pop culture came about. That wasn't so painful, was it? Here's a quick vocab recap. Ryukouka, a form of popular music back in the day that was influenced by Western jazz and blues. Enka, a type of emotional balladry. Kayokyoku, a more polished version of Enka. Ongaku, music. By the way, if you haven't checked out our official website yet, why not give it a browse? At Nihongo Master, we offer efficient Japanese lessons that are quick, easy, and fun for Japanese language learners of all levels, from beginners to advanced. Our smart tools will assist you in areas where you need a little bit of a push and congratulate you on the ones you waste. With a community of over 50,000 Japanese students, you're not alone on your learning journey. Make new friends and improve together with our point system, collecting points as you go along. Ask away any questions you have on our group discussion pages. There's sure to be others as well as our Japanese instructors that are quick to answer. You can also take Nihongo Master with you on the go and learn Japanese as you trot the globe. Practical, right? Remember when we said that the idol culture boomed and is what we now know about J-pop? Idols are extremely significant in Japanese pop music and Japanese popular culture. We actually have a whole episode talking about idol culture. 
That's season 3, episode 12. So, if you haven't tuned into that one, that's a pretty good place to go to for an in-depth look into the Japanese idol world. But here, we'll have just a summarized version. If you don't already know, idols in Japan are basically celebrities, men and women, like Backstreet Boys or Spice Girls. The Japanese word for idol is actually a gairaigo to mean foreign loanword, so it's called idoru. This word has been used since the 1920s to refer to popular people in the English language, though it only came to use in Japan in the 1960s. Big names now include solo idol acts like Kiari Pamiu Pamiu, the Harajuku influencer slash model, and celebrity idol groups like Arashi and AKB48. See, if you have anyone to thank for, for the makings of idol culture in Japanese popular music culture, it's the fans. Japanese popular culture wouldn't be a thing without the fans. Fans are vital in the uprise of this culture. Communities are created among people who share common interests. I mean, that's the very definition of the word fandom, a term which describes communities built around a shared enjoyment of an aspect of popular culture, such as books, movies, TV shows, bands, sports, or sports teams, etc. These fans are examples of participatory culture, an opposing concept to consumer culture, where individuals like fans aren't only consumers, but also contributors and creators of some form of creative media. And for what it seems, participatory culture is significant in Japanese popular culture. Now I've used the word culture a lot here. So I'm going to drop the Japanese word for it, and that's bunka. Anyway, what I'm saying is, the fans have quite the control, more than they think. Fandoms influence the J-pop scene, from what they wear and how they look, to how they sound and perform. Because fandoms are vital to J-pop success, changes to what they like and dislike are taken seriously. It can all be traced back to how idol culture even came to be. Variety shows, or variety in Japanese, like singing competitions were a huge hit in the 70s. Heck, it's even till now, becoming a mainstay on primetime TV. In these variety, fans get to choose the participants they want to debut as an idol, and they become baradoru, variety show idols. Now, it may all seem like the role of an idol is just to be there, sing and dance, and dress up as told. We're not really that far off. I would argue that the control Japanese celebrities have are extremely different from Western celebrities when it comes to both musical control and management control. But we'll cover that in Season 3, Episode 12. And quoting to Professor Otmazgen again, it is overwhelmingly idol-driven. It is not listening to the music per se that is important, but rather the practice of being a fan of the artist that has become indispensable. Now for a quick vocab recap. Aidoru Idol, gairaigo, foreign loanword, bunka, culture, variety, variety TV shows, baradoru, variety TV idols. Now you know what J-pop is, how it became what it is today, and the roles of the idol culture in it all. Some might say we might have a popular culture shock. What do you think is different between Japanese popular music and Western popular music? Tell us your thoughts by commenting on our social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, head over to the Hongo Master blog if you're interested in reading out on topics like these some more. And if you're keen on picking up some more Japanese for yourself, pop on to our official website, nihongomaster.com, to learn more. While you're at it, why not get yourself a subscription? Get a head start on your Nihongo journey with Nihongo Master. And thank you so much for listening in. Join me in the next one, where I'll be walking you down the avenue of Japan's rich culture. Mata ne! Nee.